Hello everyone, this is Brock Skaggs. I'm going to make this uh, video as kind of a second part of a two-part series. Uh, the first video we had, we created a cam profile. Um, that is shown in chart one here. And we basically developed a process where we looked at the motion of the follower. And then from that, we were able to come up with the points along the profile or perimeter, if you will, of the cam itself here, and those XY ordered pairs are in columns G and H right now of sheet one here. And so we didn't just do this willy-nilly, um, we had a certain motion we had in mind, which I've got described there in rows three through six. We wanted a knife edge follower to rise by one inch in 0 0.75 seconds, then we wanted it to stay there and dwell for a half a second, then we wanted it to fall back down to the reference datum, fall back down one inch in 0 0.75 seconds, and then dwell again for a half second. And so we went through this, figured out the angular velocity of the cam needs to be 24 RPMs for all these motions to happen within one revolution, and finally got to these cam coordinates, which I have plotted right here in the chart sheet. And so the second video is all about now, let's take that information, let's throw it into SolidWorks, uh, run a SolidWorks motion study, and see if we can validate this description of the cam. And so, first thing I've got to do is get these data points into SolidWorks. And so the way that we'll do that is I'll just create a new sheet, and I just am interested in these X and Y ordered pairs here. And so here I'm just going through, selecting those ranges, hit control C for copy, and here when I paste I gotta be careful because I just want to paste the values into my new sheet and so not the references at all. And so here I'm gonna make a very simple worksheet. Uh, think of column A being the X values, think of column B being the Y values, and column C needs to be the Z values here. And so X, Y, and Z for the ordered triple here. and dragging it down gets us this ordered pair X, Y, and Z for A, B, and C. And so now that I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and save this worksheet just to make sure I don't lose all my work. But now I need to take it from an Excel spreadsheet into a tab delimited text file. And here I'll just go File, Save As. And I'll save it in the same location. And notice here I'm going to change it from an XLSX file to a text tab delimited. And so text tab delimited, I'll call this cam coordinates instead of live calculation. And I'll save it there. Uh, Excel is going to chirp a couple times at me. One saying, hey, a text tab delimited can't deal with, act with multiple sheets, so it's only going to look at the active sheet, which is fine. And then also it says, hey, this is going to a text tab delimited file. Some of the features that an Excel file has cannot uh, work inside of text tab delimited. Are you okay with that? And I'm saying yes. And so now I'll go ahead and close the Excel file for a second. And I'll go to that location. And here it is. And so this is now the output from our Excel work. Uh, basically a plain text file. The way it's formatted, it's X value, tab Y value, tab Z value. So that's my X, Y, Z, my ordered triple of my point. New line, same thing happening again. And so each line of text here represents a point on the cam. And notice here we've made all the Z coordinates, if you will, at zero just because this is a planar shape and we want it drawn in the XY plane. And so now we just need to get this into SolidWorks. And so here I'll go open, we'll create a new part, make sure it's IPS units is fine, and I'm going to go straight from the curves under the features tab, curve through XYZ point, and I'll browse to the text file, I've already found it, there's my cam coordinates, and hit OK. And so what it's doing is it's basically reading that text file, and you can see all the points are plotted, or not plotted, but shown in this dialog box. I've got the nice yellow preview here to the right, and I'll hit OK, and that allows SolidWorks to draw the curve. Uh, so that's on the front plane, so I'll just go ahead and sketch on the front plane now. It's a very simple sketch that I'm after, because I'm wanting to use this curve to drive the majority of the sketch, and so I'll just use Convert Entities. Convert Entities, I can just select the curve, it picks it up as an edge, accept that, and it basically brings the spline now into my sketch. I can use the sketch now as the outer boundary for a boss extrude to actually create the 3D geometry of my cam. Here I'm going to go one step farther and create a small hole centered at the origin, 
And so this is going to allow me to have a temporary axis here, which will be the axis of revolution for this cam. Uh, with that, I'll go ahead and extrude it. We'll go mid-plane. Let's go 3 eighths of an inch for the thickness. Really, that's not too important for us right now. Uh, but with that, I've got a nice cam body now. And so I'll save that. We'll call that the cam. Um, I also need a follower. I've got a knife edge follower here that I need to create fairly quickly. And so here, nothing real exciting about it. There's that. Just adding a few relations in here. Let's go ahead and make that 90 degrees. Let's go 0 0.5 and the overall height here. Just like so. And so I've, now I've got a nice knife edge follower. We'll extrude that to go mid plane. Extrude. And have the same thickness as you saw there, 0.375. Uh, so with that, we can go save and call it the follower. And so now I have the cam and my follower. And now I've got the two different parts. The whole idea behind this video was to make a solar's motion study. And so I need to create an assembly here to show this cam follower mechanism. And so here I've got inside of a SOLIDWORKS assembly. Um, IPS unit system is going to be fine. Uh, before I go even bring in the cam or the follower, I'm going to go ahead and show a few things. Uh, I want to show the planes, I want to show the axes, and I'm going to want to show the temporary axes. Uh, the axes, you say? Well, I don't even have any axes. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is create a reference geometry axis here. The reason I want to do that is I want a nice axis here in space. Uh, in order to rotate the cam around. And so I'm just clicking on the top and right planes. Uh, that sets up a axis at the intersection, which should be in the Z direction for us. And now my axis 1 will be the axis of revolution for this cam. Now I'll go ahead and insert the cam. I will need to float it, since it is the first part that comes in here. And we'll need to mate this thing up. And so, as far as mates goes, I'm going to take the temporary axis of the cam and mate it with axis 1 of the assembly. And at this point, it should be able to rotate as well as slide. And so, for the sliding action, I'll take the front plane of the cam and mate it with the front plane of the assembly. And so now this thing should just be able to rotate. Uh, if I grab it, you can see it just rotates right around the axis there. Um, one thing we want to do is set up an initial condition here. And so I'll go ahead and show the planes of the cam there. And so the cam initially is going to sit something like this. And then it's going to rotate like this in the counterclockwise direction when I start it. Uh, the reason being, uh, I can see this constant radius section here. Uh, so that's going to be a dwell. And then as soon as I start rotating counterclockwise here, it's going to start rising, if you will, uh, as the radial distance is getting larger and larger. And so the way I'm going to set up that initial condition is I'll use a mate. And I'll mate this plane here. This is the top plane of the cam with the top plane of the assembly. And mate those co as coincident. And here I'm going to rename that as initial condition inside of my mates. Now let's go ahead and save this assembly just in case anything bad is to happen. That's the nice thing about this now is I can come in, I can right click on the initial condition and suppress it. And I can spin it around and do whatever I want. And then I can always go right back to that set position just by unsuppressing the mate. At this point, let's go ahead and put it in the follower. And so I'll just grab the follower and place it here. And we'll show the planes on it as well. And so we'll just go mate. I'll say the right plane of the follower to the right plane of the cam just to keep it in line there, and then also in line in the Z direction. Let's go front plane now of the assembly with the, or excuse me, yeah, front plane of the assembly with the front plane of the knife edge, which is very good. Here I want to make sure I did, yeah, I actually did not want this. Uh, let's go ahead and clear this out. I want to make sure I don't grab the, the cams 
right plane here. And notice here I'm referencing the cam and the follower. Let's clear that. We'll pull this out just so we can see what we have. Here I want to make sure that I have the, the right plane of the cam, or no, excuse me, right plane of the follower with the right plane of the assembly. There we go. Just because the right plane of the cam is, of course, going to be rotating, so I want to make sure that doesn't happen. And so here I've got front plane to front plane, which is good, and then right plane to right plane, where here I've always been dealing with the planes of the assembly and the planes of the follower and not using any references to the cam itself there. And so this should just cause this nice translational motion in the y direction for our follower. And now we just need to link the motion together. And here I'll go ahead and hide the majority of this. And so the up and down motion of my follower and the rotation of my cam are linked together. And so to do that in SOLIDWORKS we'll use a cam mate. And so I'm under mates. It's not a standard or advanced mate, it's actually a mechanical mate. And the first one there is cam. And selecting the mechanical mate cam, I've got the entity to select. That is the cam surface. I've got the cam follower selection. I'm just going to select a vertex on the cam itself, and that should link those two together. And just accepting that, go ahead and hit Control S to save real quick. And now I always suggest you try things out in the model tab before you go to motion studies. And so here I'm going to come through, I'll right click and suppress my initial condition, and I'll rotate this in the counterclockwise direction. And notice I can see the the rise here, it dwells, it's a fall, another dwell, just like I'm looking for. And so that looks really good. And so I'll quit that. I went ahead and resuppressed the initial condition. And now I'm ready to start getting into the motion studies. And so here, let's go ahead and close a few part files out. Get to zoom that looks reasonably appropriate. I'm going to go ahead and add in SOLIDWORKS motion here because I'm going to use the motion analysis part of SOLIDWORKS motion because I want to pull data away from this model. And so letting it add in that SOLIDWORKS motion add-in, I can now go to the motion study tab and on animation I can drop down to the motion analysis. Uh, so I've got motion analysis here. Uh, you can notice both of my parts are locked. You don't see any minus signs next to them, so I need to give them back a degree of freedom. And so I'll right click on the initial condition and hit suppress. Now notice the minus signs next to them here. And so we do have motion. I need to put in a motor. And so I'll put the motor in here. I do want a rotary motor. I'll select this inner cylindrical face. Here, let's turn so we can see. Uh, this is the opposite of the way I want to go right now. I want it to rise to begin with. Here, if I rotate it in the clockwise direction, it's first going to trace this path of my cam, and so it's going to dwell. Instead, I want to flip this to go the opposite direction, and then I will have the rise right at the beginning here. Uh, as, far, as far as the speed goes, uh, let's look at our live calculations. I believe it was 24 RPMs that we calculated in Excel. And so here I'm just back in that Excel spreadsheet. Let's go up to the top. And yes, 24 RPMs was our calculated angular velocity of the cam from the previous video. And so we'll go 24 RPMs. Uh, how long do we need to spin this thing for is the other question. And so here, 2.5 seconds you can see. And so I'll edit the time key with a right click there. 2.5 seconds expand this thing out a little bit. And let's also make the frame rate a little larger at 100. I'll check the animate to speed up the calculation a little bit. Uh, so that looks good at this point. And then I will hit calculate for us. And so I believe it calculated here. So that we're good. Got the yellow line now. And so now we should be able to preview the motion. There you go. Just once more. Uh, so it went through one revolution, which is what we expected, right? That's why um, we only set it to 2.5 seconds. And now we're ready to start pulling some data off, see if we actually get the follower motion that we were looking for. And so from that, we'll go results and plots. It's uh, displacement, velocity, and acceleration is what we're after. 
uh, linear displacement here, Y component, and here I'm going to select this point here and this point here. So at the very top of the follower is one reference and then just the central edge of the circle associated with the axis of revolution for the whole is the other reference. And you can see here we've got the shape at least that we want, right? We've got a rise, we've got a dwell, a fall, and a dwell. And so let's get this data now into Excel so we can compare directly. And so what I'll do is while the plot is still showing, I'll come over here in the bottom left where it shows the tree. I'll right click and say export to spreadsheet. And so exporting to spreadsheet, I got sheet one here. And this is in a different workbook, so I'll just copy this data into my other workbook, just for this example, just right here. Let's move these plots over a little, and let's add a series here. And so I'll select data, add, this will be SolidWorks, and the data from SolidWorks has a time column here, which will be our X values and the Y values will be here. And we'll accept that. And notice the shapes look pretty close here on the follower displacement, this diagram, this chart here. Uh, but I've got this initial offset here, which is fine. I can fix that fairly easily. And I'll just say this is equal to this minus this. And so here I'm just subtracting off by initial value of 3.5 except here I will put the lock on the last 3.5 there. And so you can see there in the top right, I'm just saying, hey, take the value minus what will be 3.5 and evaluating that all the way down. Uh, now we can adjust the range that it's looking at, and you can see the values are right on top of each other. Uh, here I'll just quickly come in here and edit the data series so that this looks a little more appropriate. There we are. And so the black dash data is for SolidWorks and the blue was our analytical work from the previous video. Now let's do the same thing with velocity and acceleration now and see if those match up. And so what it will do is we will come back into the plots. Here I'll pick the linear velocity. I'm interested in the Y component. Notice the motion of the followers only in the Y direction. I'll just click the top part for this one. Click OK. Uh, that's looking pretty good. We'll do the same procedure here. Go ahead and close the workbook that was created when we exported the displacement data. We'll export this to spreadsheet now. There's the data here. And just select and copy this, and so that goes here. There's my velocity data. And once more for acceleration. And so I need to create the acceleration plot in SolidWorks. So again, we're going to the results icon, displacement velocity acceleration. I can go linear acceleration. Again, I want just the Y component. Select the top edge. I can see the, the point that it's going to reference. Green check marking there is the plot that we're looking for. That looks pretty good. Export to spreadsheet here. And again, I just want the acceleration column out of this. Uh, the time column, I can use the time from the linear displacement since it's all happening at the same time steps. All right. And so now we'll do a very similar thing with velocity and acceleration. So. I'll add now a series to velocity. And so this should be the velocity data coming from SolidWorks. And you can see here immediately uh, my blue basically got covered with orange. And so again, I'll just format the data series just to prove that yes there are two data series here the blue and the black dash again the black dash coming from SolidWorks so uh, so far we're two for two and once more for the acceleration 
And so we'll add the data series again. Call it SolidWorks. The X values are here. The Y values are here. Just select the appropriate ranges. There we are. Oh, went a little too fast there. It was there and then I hit the wrong button, so apologize there. Uh, so we'll try it once more. There is the X, and now for the Y values. And OK, there we are. And so notice now our follower acceleration is looking pretty good as well. Again, once more on the formatting the data series, just so we can clearly see two different data points on here. Looks like I forgot to make this dashed as well. There we are. And so what we were after in this video was to basically verify uh, that we had achieved what we were looking for. And so uh, we took the ordered pairs that we basically calculated from Excel, uh, we brought them into SolidWorks, used those to drive the model of the CAM itself, created a simpler follower, ran the motion study, and we now brought the data back from SolidWorks into Excel and compared them right here in this worksheet. And so one thing you can see is now the black dash data series are from SolidWorks, the blue that's underlying them is from our analytical work we did previously. And so this is showing pretty good that our desired outcome, the desired outcome was the motion of the follower, uh, was achieved by our CAM follower mechanism here. And you can see the follower displacement matches up really good, the velocity matches up pretty good. Uh, the acceleration, for the most part, is very good as well. And we just have a little bit of discrepancies happening right around the discontinuities here, um, which is okay there. And so uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Uh, hopefully this helps you with the, the SOLIDWORKS portion here um, where you're creating your own CAM follower mechanisms inside of SOLIDWORKS. Thanks again.